hearing him accept accountability was nice, but I didn't feel a thing. You know, we were in court with a minor who um, he also pled guilty to charges of um, assaulting him. And after hearing the details of it, that guy's that guy's a monster. He should have been arrested in 2017 and had justice and had he been held accountable for what he did in 2017 to that minor, George Floyd would still be here. Today he had a chance to blow kisses and give air hugs to his family. We can't do that to our loved one who's not here. Derek Chauvin back in court, this time in federal court, entering a guilty plea. Court TV legal correspondent Julie Janae has more for us tonight. All eyes were on Derek Chauvin inside this Warren E. Burger federal courthouse in St. Paul as he entered his guilty pleas to two counts of a federal indictment that was filed against him back in May. The prosecutor stood to explain the details of this plea agreement and asked him, uh, you willfully placed your knee, left knee, on the back and body of George Floyd and you held him down even though he was not resisting and long after he was non-responsive, Derek Chauvin said yes. Something similar he had to allocute to and plead guilty to uh, Another count one of a separate indictment that only had to do with Chauvin and involved a juvenile, a 14 year old who back in 2017 Chauvin arrested and also held his knee on the back and body of that 14 year old for many minutes. Also, while that teen was not resisting today in court, he agreed correct out loud in court saying that he was responsible for willfully depriving not only that juvenile, but also George Floyd of their constitutional rights inside that courtroom, the family of George Floyd, his brothers, Terrence and Felonis and Rodney Floyd, along with his nephew, Brandon Williams, they had this to say in reaction to this moment. I basically want to say it's I look at all of this, all of these happenings as a necessary evil. And when, when I say that, um, I have a friend that you know his 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 brand is necessary evil necessary evil and um i, I kind of thought about that and i looked at my brother's situation and i looked at dante Wright's situation and i said this is a necessary evil because it's waking people up it's getting people to understand what's going on in our culture you know and to show them that we need justice we need to be treated equal as human beings we don't need to be looked at as black people white people Korean people, Asian people, no, need to be looked at as human beings. There were no cameras inside of the federal courtroom as far as the public could see. Derek Chauvin was seated at his table there on the defense side, dressed in an orange prison jumpsuit. He's in a maximum security prison here in Minnesota. He was with his attorney, Eric Nelson, the same one who represented him in the state trial. What happens next is the federal judge in this case will set a sentencing hearing after a pre-sentencing report is completed and reviewed by both sides. Reporting in St. Paul. Julia Janae with Court TV. All right, we got the think tank with us. Now, I want to talk about why he did it. And I think I know exactly why. Let me put this up on the screen real quick, okay? Um, some of the terms of what happened here. So we'll put it up on the screen so we can show everybody. The sentencing range is from 20 to 25 years, okay? The sentence to run, key word here, folks, concurrently with the state sentence, okay? Next, let's continue. He is to serve 90% of his time in a federal institution and subject to a five-year term of supervised release. Okay, Kirk Nurmi, for criminal defendants, when you say the magic word concurrently, you know what I hear? Free crime. Well, I don't necessarily know that I'd say free crime, but I tell you what, what they hear is hope, Vinny, because, you know, he had about a 0% chance of winning this federal trial. And having a concurrent sentence means he's not going to do any more time, and he has something, the most valuable thing somebody in his position could have. He has hope of getting out. And I think that was a big motivating factor, because had he lost at that trial, had they been consecutive, he knows he never would have saw the light of day. 
And that, I think, is ultimately what motivated this plea, because hope means a heck of a lot to a criminal defendant. I've sat across many of them who have none. And when you have a little bit of shred, they latch onto that shred like it's like it's steak, Benny. Nima, explain this to me, though. Federal prosecutors, right? This is this is your this is your place. This is what you did. Um, why on earth are they giving him a free crime? Is that a sign of maybe they weren't as confident as, as Kirk believes they were in the case? I mean, concurrent, I hear concurrent, free crime. Uh, Vinny, the feds don't lose. So we know that. I agree with Kirk. There's a 0% chance Chauvin. Well, you don't is lose if you give case. him a free crime. How could you well, lose? But it's, not, it's, it's not a free crime, and this is why. And you know me, I don't like Derek Chauvin, but under the Department of Justice's Pettit policy, they do not prosecute these types of cases. We're seeing it here, we're seeing it with the McMichaels and Arbery. But once state prosecutors pick up a case, particular violent crime like murder, the Department of Justice doesn't come in unless there is a compelling federal interest that isn't vindicated in the state case. And in this case, he's already been convicted in state court of murder, second degree murder, the first time there in Minnesota. So what is really the compelling federal interest here in prosecuting this case, getting him convicted? I don't think any district judge is gonna give him consecutive time for essentially the same facts as the state case. And we know why Chauvin did it, because he's gonna lose. He wanted to serve his time in federal prison anyway, because he already tried to plead to a 10-year deal that Attorney General, former Attorney General Bill Barr rejected. So it makes sense for everyone. He's going to get consecutive time. He's going to be in federal prison, not club fed like people expect. I think it's the right result here, Vinny. Eklund, I'm trying to figure out why his obsession with federal prison as opposed to state prison. And I think, yeah. tell, me, tell me if this is right. Um, he's a former police <laughs> officer. He might be less likely to run into some former people that maybe he arrested during the last 20 years if he's in federal prison as opposed to state prison. Yeah, if he's in state prison, he's not going to make it. Um, it's, it's just it's just what it is. He's not going to make it. Um, it. He won't last long. Federal prison would kind of give him some type of just safety in general, just more safety. Um, state prison is not a place to be an officer charged with killing a black man, um, it, that's just what you don't want to do. So uh, as his defense attorney, I think his defense attorney did the best move. Um, I, I don't believe it's a free crime, Vinny. I actually believe that it's a free conviction. Because um, as Nima stated, um, this is rare. Once once the state picks up a case, a Fed, a Fed is not going to try to prosecute it. So we have a conviction in state court and we also have a conviction in federal court. And I think that it was reasonable. Okay.